Hi. What is this place? The Rotunda. How can I help? Where would I find the crystal room? Oh easy. It's on the far end. Thanks. Hey, not a problem. Good luck. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is have a waypoint marker travel around the room. The way I have this set up right now is on the rotunda marker in this area here. I have a list variable set up with varying values based on the location of where I want the marker to end up. Also on this marker, I have a waypoint state machine and I'll be using the single action in this state machine set orange by default. Okay, for this tutorial, we'll look at Alex in the hub here and how the player will be interacting with Alex as he wanders around the rotunda. With Alex, you would need, or with your character, you would need two objects underneath this character. The first one is a dialogue marker. The dialogue marker is where the player will walk to and interact with Alex when you speak to him. The second is an interact icon. This interact icon could be anything that you wish. It could be an icon that is says push square to talk or it could be an exclamation mark. This one is hidden by default. And as you can see here, I have a triangle for the PlayStation button. Also under Alex, you'll see there is one state machine. In this state machine, there's a number of parameters, four triggers, 58 actions, and two conditions. There's a few parameters that are important here. These parameters allow the state machine to communicate with objects in the hierarchy. To set up these parameters, you go to the blackboard in the state machine that you want to set them up. And the ones that we have here currently are two bulls. One is can talk. So when the player enters this volume, we set the bull can talk. And the next one is talk started. This is when the trigger, the button or the key is pressed. We'll go through this uh, further as we as we go along here. Cam exit, you don't really need. NPC, this is another version of the invoker itself. Dialogue marker, dialogue cam. Cam anchor, again, we don't really need that. Waypoints for the waypoint here for the rotunda marker. Prompt, which is the prompt that we have over his head and point. With the blackboard objects and bools set up, now we can actually communicate with the hierarchy scene here. So for the first one, again, HUD Alex is already set automatically to the invoker. Dialogue marker, this is the one that we have parented underneath Alex. Dialogue cam and camera. Again, you don't need these ones, but you can add them if you require them for your camera, if you're doing a dialogue camera. Prompt, interact icon. Again, enter our icon here underneath Alex. NPC, what I was mentioning here, the invoker is another version of the invoker. Uh, I like to use this just in case this doesn't work all the time. I like to directly reference the character that will be used. Cam anchor, again, we don't really need this one, but this one is set here just in case we need that. The rotunda marker is the waypoint that we have set up here earlier. And in order for you to set these up, all you have to do is just simply drag and drop them into the correct corresponding location. In the state machine itself, we have four triggers. We have an on player enter, on player exit, a key down trigger, and an on start trigger. With state machine, if the action is the default action, it will be set to the color orange as we have here for the NPC walk. So with the NPC walk, basically I want the NPCs to walk and not run. So the first thing we did in this default action that will run all the time without a trigger, I set the change property of the NPC to can run. So I go in here, add action, change property to NPC, local variable, game object NPC, or it can be invoker. I set that to can run and the value of false. Now the first thing we want the NPC to do is wander or patrol around. So this is where the unstart trigger happens here. So the unstart trigger directly goes into this wonder action. And basically this wonder action is going to take the values from the rotunda marker that we set up prior. 
in the wonder action, we have it set to two seconds. Then I move the MPC local variable again, or invoker uh, MPC. I want it to move to the variable local variable waypoint. So the local variable is the variable that set on this MPC through the parameters that we have set, have set up here, which is waypoints. So again, variable, local variable, game object itself, waypoints. That's the settings that we set up in the Blackboard itself. Then we finish with a restart action. I also have it set to wait until it arrives and make it cancelable. Okay, so let's look at the two bools that we're going to use. We're going to use the can talk and the talk started. When the player enters the volume, it's going to transition into this action here where I have it set up the NPC, local variable again, NPC is going to track the player. And that's done by just typing in head track in the action. From there, it's going to set the prompt that's hidden here to active to visible. And then it's going to set the can talk bool value to true, letting the state machine know that value has been turned. The other bool is going to be enabled when I hit the joystick button three, which is the triangle on the PlayStation controller or any key that you have on your keyboard. I have the transition mode to selective, meaning that it's going to transition like an if else statement. So it's going to transition from the topmost down to the bottom. Not left to right here, but top to bottom. So first thing it's going to do is going to check and see if the, the bulls are true. And if it's true, it's going to continue on. Or if it's false, it's going to go to the false where I'm going to set the bulls to false. So when the player hits button three, in my case, it could be any key. It's going to first go down and check the condition here. If the condition here is met, is true then it will continue on basic dialogue. So to set the conditions, basically from here, you click on this arrow, uh, the line here with the arrow, you set to use condition, you set the bool, set to local variable, which is what we have set up in the blackboard. Then we set to can talk, which is what we're checking for. We'll set that to true. So if this transition is true, then let's continue to basic dialogue. When we get to basic dialogue, there's two very important actions that are need to be set up here. First, we assign the talk started to true. Then we cancel state wonder, cancel this state over here. Basically what happens is when this talk started is true and the can talk is also true, then the wonder is gonna transition out of this state transition into the basic dialogue then it'll run through everything that's listed here until it gets to the end where it's going to again assign the bull talk started to false this looks like a lot but it's basically just a repeating pattern of uh text uh, action so it's not really a lot it just it just appears that way okay let's take a look at alex now as you can see alex wonder cycle is continuously going until I actively break it. Keep an eye on the state machine as we interact. Hi, what is this place? The Rotunda. How can I help? Where would I find the crystal room? Oh, easy. It's on the far end. Thanks. Hey, not a problem. Good luck. As you see, I broke the cycle. And now it flows back into the head track and wonder and he goes about his business again until I break the cycle again. State machine is awesome. It keeps everything clean in the hierarchy and I hope you have some fun with it. Like I've been having some fun putting this NPC dialogue system together. And if you have any questions, just catch me on discord and I will go through the best I can. All right. Until then, take care until the next video. Hi there. Need to know something? Yes. How do I use the crystal? Whenever you're ready for your mission, you can use the crystal to walk to the location. So in order to go to the next level, you have to activate the crystal by using triangle on the gamepad. Sounds easy enough, thanks.
Thank you.